Good morning. Welcome to church. Thank you for joining this online church service of the SA Church in the UK. Um, it's a privilege to share this message with you. I believe that God is working through his word, through his Holy Spirit in each one of you. And I will keep on believing that, that, that his words will make a difference in your life, that it will build you up, that it will strengthen you, that it will give you peace that it will inspire you to, to live a kind of life, to show the world that this word, this word is real. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we may come together in this morning to listen to your word. Um, your word is the bread of life. Your word give us direction. It's the light on our path. You are the one in whose hands our lives are. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that we know that you are working in the world around us and in our own lives and through our lives, that you, you are the one trustworthy God, that there is no one like you. And if we come and pray this morning, Lord Jesus, will you open our hearts and our minds to receive this word and to make room for it in our hearts and to allow it to, to be planted and germinated and grow and bear fruit throughout our lives. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. We are busy talking about the value of scripture. We are talking about um, if it's still making a difference in our lives to have scripture, to listen to scripture, to read God's word, to and and how, what is the right way to go around with it? Um, can we still give it a place in our lives? Can we still believe what we read? Um, does it still make a difference today? If, if I understand it correct, the Bible tells us of who God is, what God does, and how he, through, through, through history, reached out to people and built a relationship with people. But it's more than that. Because I believe that the Word wants to teach us about life about how to, how to react and how to think of different situations, about the reality of, of what we are facing every day in our lives. If we read the Bible, I think it's most important to first ask, what do we think the Lord is trying to teach the first readers of this book? Because we're not the first readers, we're just the next generation. The first readers of the Bible was real people that lived real lives in a real world. And, 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 and uh, books in the Bible are put there to help them in their situation, in their life. So the Bible wants to teach us about who God is and what God does. The Bible wants to teach us and learn us to, to ask the question, what did this mean for the first readers? And then we can ask, what does it mean for me today if I take that meaning and I apply it in my life? What difference is it going to make? We've got to ask ourselves the question the whole time, how do I bring God and the world of the first readers and our world together, because that's where meaning lies. Um, to help us with this, let's turn to Daniel. Daniel was written uh, um, just after the exile started. Um, it's written for the exiles in Babylon, also for the Jews back in Jerusalem. And, and the whole idea of Daniel was to tell people, as we saw last last time that God is still involved in their lives um, and we're going to read about how, um, how Daniel had to had to interpret the dream uh, of Nebuchadnezzar and the difference it made so let's read 
um, Daniel chapter 2. Uh, it's, a long, it's a long chapter. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but you're welcome at home tonight to, to read through the whole chapter and think about what we shared this morning again. Um, Daniel 2 chapter, Daniel chapter 2 verse 1. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king, may the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will interpret it. And then Nebuchadnezzar come and say, no, I'm not going to tell you the dream. If you are as good as you are, if you are a real astrologer, if you've got real wisdom, you will tell me the dream and the explanation. Let's continue reading. Uh, once more they replied, let the king tell his servants a dream and we will interpret it. And the king answered, I'm certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there's only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then, tell me the dream, and I will know you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, There is not a person on earth who can do what the king wants. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer. What the king asks it's too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods. And they do not live among the human beings. And then we read how the king becomes angry and wanted to put them all to death. And Daniel hear about this. And he says, verse, verse 16. At this Daniel went to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to his house. And explain the matters to his friends, Ananya, Mishal, and Asaria, and listen what they do. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning the mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. And said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things and knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me that we asked you. What we asked you of you, you have made known to us the dream of the king. And then we read how Daniel goes back and tells the king he knows what happened. He knows the dream. God revealed the dream to him. Um, miss verse 31. Your majesty looked and there before you stood a large statue. David is inter Daniel is interpreting the dream. An enormous dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold. The chest and arms of silver. Its belly of thighs of bronze. Its legs of iron. Its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. And then a, a, a rock comes loose and destroys the whole statue. Um, and Daniel actually said that each part of the statue um, tells you of one power, uh, world power. And so one after the other are being destroyed. Verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel, unheard of, and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries. For you, will, will, you were able to reveal the mystery. Uh, Daniel chapter 2 tells the story of Nebuchadnezzar 
we had a we had a dream and a concerning dream um, and um, this dream if we if we if we read what what Daniel said is this dream tells about power struggle between nations and how one nation after the other um, come uh, become in charge and and how they destroy each other just to be destroyed again by another so the whole conflict story of powers are being revealed he was a young king he was mainly he was only scripture tells us he was only two years uh, king of of babylonia so here's a young king unsure that he's not exactly settled in his in his um, rule so um, to to dream something so unconcerting is not easy um, and you must remember that that um, the time of the Bible was a time in which people take note of their dreams. Dreams was important. It was part of their way to explain a lot of things. It was it was an indication of God talking with them, God God telling them things, God showing them things. And we read how he had a dream. And he called all his clever people and tell them, you give me an explanation. You tell me the dream and give me an explanation. Um, and it can seems to be unfair, but maybe not. Because we don't always remember our dreams. Can you remember the dream you had last night? We don't always remember. We forget that. That's part of why it makes dreams so mysterious. But his cleverest people answer was, we can't do it. Just listen to the answer, chapter 2, verse 10. They say, the astrologers answered the king. There's not a person on earth who can do what the king asks. It's impossible, verse 11. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods. And they do not live among human beings. You see, the, their problem was that their God was, their gods were far away. Their problem was their gods was not involved in everyday life. Their God didn't mix with people. They were far away in heaven. And then you're in trouble. Your God is far away, especially in times when, when, when difficult things happen, when unexplainable things happen. Especially in times when, when you don't know what the future holds. If your God is far away, then you're in trouble. You're in a dead end. And sometimes we're there. Sometimes we have that experience, that feeling. Sometimes it... It makes us feel when, when things doesn't work out and life's difficult and there's not answers coming through for things that we, that our God does not, is not interested in us. Our God is far away. And then we don't have a chance. Maybe, maybe that's why Nebuchadnezzar was so angry. Maybe that's what it was, was the reason why he wanted to put them all to death. Because they, they have no value for him. If they can't talk with more wisdom. If they can't give explanations for what happens in life. Isn't that what we want as well? We want to understand things. We want to have answers to our why questions. But then we read of young Daniel. If I understand it right. I read chapter 1 and chapter 2 together. He was in the second year of a three year of a three year. Um, study course he was still a very young um, uh, uh, wise clever guy in the in the in the king's court and it's interesting with how much confidence you come forward you go to the king and tell what I'll, I'll give you the answer that's how much he trusts his Lord his God because he sees it my God is not far away in, in, in uh, chapter 2 verse 20 he says 
Praise be the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are he. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in the darkness and light dwells with him. My God is not far away. Um, and he, Daniel does two other things makes all his friends get all his friends together and tell them listen pals now we need to pray second thing he does never try on your own if you're in trouble get your friends together get help don't go alone and there's this african proverb that says if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go a long way go together and that's what happened daniel no we're in trouble I need my friends. Let's let's go to our friends, get them together, and then we pray. Because he understood the power of prayer. He understood what happens when we pray. Because when we pray, we open ourselves up for God to work. When we pray, we acknowledge God's presence and God's power and God's ability, not only to work miracles, but just to be there. Just to, to be in his presence makes a difference. It just takes helps us to take our focus away from all these things that troubles us and realize who's in charge. And that's what happened. Chaos in your life, unsure about your future? Start praying. Because when you pray, you reveal what you believe. What kind of God you serve? Daniel says, my God, I pray to my God who are in heaven, who is, who is in heaven. And I may talk to him because he's a God that listens. He's not far away. And when Jesus comes to earth in John 1, 14, he says, he pitched his tent in our neighborhood. He moved into our neighborhood. God came down from, from heaven and lived among us. In, in Genesis 28, the uh, story about Jacob that ran away and he, he, he fell asleep at night and then an, a ladder from heaven came down and he wake up and he says, I didn't realize God is here in my trouble. My God is in heaven, but he came down to earth. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Um, Daniel goes further and he said, the God that I serve is not a far off God that don't want to get involved in our lives. It's a God that's much bigger and wiser, has more wisdom and power than other gods. He's a God that changes time and seasons. He's not, he's not being held prison by time. He's a, he's a God that has power and wisdom and knowledge. He knows all the secrets. He knows everything that you thought you were hiding away. Everything that other people don't know. He's a guy, God's interesting that it says, and light dwells within, which says, our God knows. He understands. Even our future is in his hands. We're not... We're not victims. We're not victims of difficult situations of powers uh, around us. We've got a God that comes down from heaven and who gets involved in your life, my life. Moved into your neighborhood, moved in with you. That's how our God is. Isn't that what... Jesus taught us how to bid our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our God brings heaven and earth close. It's his world. Everything come together in him. David's believe. Daniel, sorry, Daniel. Daniel believed that God can do anything. Anything's possible. He says in verse 28, talking to the king, he said, but there is a God in heaven 
reveals mysteries. The God I serve know everything. Um, Daniel says that um, I'm, I'm not even scared for the power of this king. I'm not even afraid of this king because my God's even bigger. My God knows what the king doesn't know. Daniel believed that everything we have, everything we are, comes from this God. We're not in charge of our own lives. Daniel believes that God's kingdom will last forever. He's not part of Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue that's going to be destroyed. Our God's king can never, our God's kingdom can never be destroyed. It will last forever. Even, even Nebuchadnezzar had to admit it, fall down on his knees and pray to this God. And now we've got to ask for ourselves, what, what did this mean to that first lot of people that was in exile? To realize our God knows more than this powerful king. Our God is holding our future in his hand. Our God empowers us to, in difficult situations to trust him. To hold on to him. To get our friends together to start praying. To know there are certain things that only our God can do. What a relief. What a relief to make the discovery that you're not on your own. You don't have to survive on your own, that you're not a victim. That our lives is now God's hands. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus for the scripture that we can 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 learn from the story of Daniel how much he trusts you how much he he invested in you how much he put his hope on you that's what we want to do we want to trust you lord jesus for our unsure future we want to trust you with our lives we want to trust you that you will work miracles, that you will give us wisdom, that you will help us, that you will give us understanding and hope and faith. And that we will know what it means to put our lives in your hands. Our God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We have an amazing opportunity to bring our offerings. You see all the information down below. Thank you for everyone that keeps on giving. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you experience God's presence in your life today. Amen.